All right, what's up guys? If you've been watching my channel for any period of time, you probably know I'm a General Motors guy. I wear my Chevrolet hat and I drive my GMC. And I'm proud to like General Motors, but uh, one of the few General Motors brands I haven't owned yet is Cadillac. Uh, and I've always thought it'd be super cool to own a Cadillac just because it's kind of like luxury. And you know me, I don't live a very luxurious life, so it'd be cool to just, just drive one around for a little while. Um, so my friend Jeb, who's my cameraman, found one in Connecticut for 1500 bucks that only has 37,000 original miles on it. Uh, this is the Cadillac Cimarron, which is kind of the laughing stock of Cadillacs because it was just kind of a failed attempt. However, it's still more luxurious than anything else I own. So I told Jeb, hey, if you go down and buy this car, 1500 bucks, I'll split the price with you. And then I'll split the, I'll fix it up, help you fix it up. And I'll, we'll split the profits and we'll both make a good profit. And uh, Jeb said that, hey, that's a good idea. So... I sent him down to Connecticut. He's going down there right now. Um, I told him to record a little bit for me. So let's play that recording of what he's doing right now. Here you go. Jeb here this morning. Uh, rural Vermonter sent me on a mission to go pick up a Cadillac Cimarron. I'm, sh I'm sure some of you guys know about that and about uh, GM's failure to make a compact luxury sedan. But uh, I thought it was an opportunity we couldn't pass up. And it is in Connecticut a bucket list car, so even though it has no brakes, we feel like this could be a good deal for us. Uh, we're going to split the price, and Rural Vermonter will help me, will help teach me how to like fix brakes, and then we'll sell it and split the profit, so. Here we are arriving now. As you can see in the back now, we successfully have gotten the, uh, the Cimarron in the back. Took a little while um, to finally get it on there as it has no brakes. So we had to use the parking brake to keep it from falling back off the off the off the flatbed. But it's up there, heading back now. 600 bucks. It was listed for 1500 on Craigslist, so pretty good deal, I'd say. Well, we're gonna have to forgive Jeb for filming vertically instead of horizontally. Sorry about that. I never told him to, I guess. Um, but he was able to barter down the guy from 1500 to 600, which is really impressive. That's a lot. I mean, I don't even take that risk a lot of the time. I never ask for that much off. Um, I think the Cadillac's in pretty good shape. It's basically as the advertisement described, it's got no brakes, but it runs and drives good. So let's see what he dragged home. There it is. And if you guys know anything about Cadillacs, the Cimarron was kind of their worst ever car. <laughs> um, in a lot of people's opinions, cause it's not really luxury. It's just kind of a cattle cavalier. However, to me, I like it because it doesn't have the North Star. Instead, it has the 2.8 V6, which is a better engine than the North Stars with the head gasket issues. They're not the greatest engine in the world because they do sometimes overheat, but uh, Corvairs, or not Corvairs, sorry, Cavaliers were known for being very reliable cars, and this is similar to a Cavalier. Like I said, the list price of this Cadillac was $1,500. Jeb took out his massive bartering skills, got the guy down to $600. I'm glad he didn't pay the 1500 for it, even though we could probably at least sell it for a little bit of a profit at that. We're gonna be able to sell it for a lot more of a profit here. Uh, let's take a look on the inside. The inside's pretty nice. It's still got good leather. The leather seats aren't ripped. There's a couple of stains back in the back seat. Who knows what that's from, but it's, that's kind of gross back there. So this car only has 37,000 original miles on it, which is pretty crazy. I think it was owned by an old man or something. And you can tell by the fact that the leather's still in that good shape and the door panels, everything like that. Uh, it's still got the original radio, which works. The only thing that doesn't work that well is the tachometer, which likes to say I'm redlining the whole time, but uh, everything else works, which I'll show you later when we test drive it. I can't test drive it yet because it has no brakes since one of the brake lines is um, rusted through. But uh, once we fix that up, we can show you more around this thing. You can tell this car's been sitting quite a while because its last service was 2013 and it said next service is due at 39,000 miles and it's still only at 37,000. So it's been sitting quite a while. However, it started right up uh, and it actually runs really good. You know, I can show you that right now, as a matter of fact, let the fuel pump run. This is a 1987, by the way. Good oil pressure. Alternator works. Original radio works. That's pretty cool. E-brake even works. So, this car is in actually good shape for its age. 
Let's go ahead and take a peek at the underside. So no, it's not the world's cleanest underside, but the frame rails, no rust on those. You know, there's a little rust on the fuel line, on the, on the suspension here, I suppose. Uh, and I'll have to find which of the brake lines is the one that's broken. But uh, the floor pans, let's see. There's the floor pans, they look original and they're not rusty. So that's good. And the V6 engine's running well, as you can hear. Let's see if we can pop the hood. Oh, and all the automatic windows still work. Go pretty fast, too. Here's the engine. There's the remnants of a mouse nest up in there. Oh, probably another one over there, too. Battery looks good, though. She definitely sounds good. Anyway, let us, uh, let's replace this brake line and see if we can get it driving. Okay, definitely not seeing any evidence of a <clears throat> leaky brake line or anything. Because I was, turned it off, builds a little bit of pressure, and it's not leaking anything out. So it's definitely either the master cylinder seals or there's air in the system or something. But it, uh, it ain't a brake line that's leaky. Alright guys, I found what he was talking about. It's just, these are the brake lines. Oh yeah, there's one rust hole. This is the only body rust hole on it. It's on the back of the rocker, the classic spot for it. Anyways, so, this is why it wasn't leaking, is because they cinched them closed. But basically what I'm guessing was one of the back brake lines was leaking, so instead of trying to fix it, he just cut it and cinched it. Which will just make it so basically you only have you only have the front brakes. However, this won't work unless you bleed the brakes too. So I'm assuming the guy didn't bleed them. He just kind of cinched it. So, I mean, to make it just minimally drivable, we can probably just bleed the front brakes and uh, and then we'll at least have brake pressure again, but we won't have back brakes. And then once I'm actually gonna be serious about fixing this car up and selling it, we will uh, replace the all the back brake line kit, which won't take me that long. We'll definitely do that. So we are gonna attempt to roll this thing off of here. Uh, the e-brake works and I guess I can just throw it in drive and kind of ruin the transmission if I'm gonna hit the woods, but we'll see what happens. What's the worst that can happen? It's a $600 car. So me and Jeb just did the, uh, we bled the front brakes, both of them, uh, and it feels like we're getting pretty good pressure. Then we add a little bit of transmission fluid because I noticed it was leaking a little bit of tranny fluid onto my trailer deck. So now, supposedly, it feels like we should have brakes, so we're going to go ahead and take it for a little spin and see what it does. Alright, let's see if it starts up. <laughs> it's dead battery. Alright, we got Jeb Subaru coming to the rescue here. See if it moves. Nope. Yep, brakes are working. We only have front brakes, so it's not going to be great, but it should be good enough. All right, we're driving it. It drives pretty good. The suspension feels pretty, pretty good actually for sitting for so long. Definitely feels tight. There's a small, tiny little misfire uh, at low RPMs. That might be taken care of if we just fill it up with 93 octane next time. That might take care of it because just from sitting for eight years. Uh, front brakes definitely need replacing. They grind a little bit and they're not strong at all. But speedometer looks like it's working. Temp gauge is slowly climbing up. It says I'm doing 7,000 RPM, which I'm not. <laughs> so that doesn't work. Let's see how it goes up this hill. 
Yeah, it goes up the hill pretty. Yeah. Oh, there it shifted into second or third gear. So at least we got two of the three gears. <laughs> All right, guys, we're stopped here. Only doing 5,000 RPM now. I'm going to do a small acceleration test just to feel how it is, feel how the transmission goes. I'll give it, I'm only going to give it half throttle because giving it more than that would just be mean after it's sat for such a long time. But here we go. Three, two, one. Yeah, man. I honestly, it's got feels, some uptake. Yeah. yeah. Car feels good for sure. Okay, so the car feels great. Definitely feels like only 30,000 miles. Uh, it has a little issue, which is not surprising at all, but it has a tiny misfire at uh, low RPMs that will probably be taken care of if I just put 93 octane in it or clean the distributor cap or something. Transmission shifted great. We only got to two out of three gears because I didn't go that fast, but uh, runs good, drives good. Front brakes work now. So we are going to put this into storage for the next four months when I'm off on my... Uh, off on my road trip but once I get back we got a new project car to work on but here's my $600 Cadillac thank you guys for watching